Hi folks, the Filipino P here, and I'm finally home. I spent three months in the US and learned a lot about the country and its people. Since many of you guys are planning to bring your Filipina partner to America, you might be wondering how she like living in the West. Will she be overwhelmed by culture shock? Will she appreciate the food and modern conveniences? Or will she end up wanting to go home? In other words, which is the better place to settle? In the US or in the Philippines? So a lot of you have asked me what I thought of America, the things I liked, the things I didn't like, and the things that surprised me. Now, I know I'm not your average Filipina, but my reactions will be pretty much the same as any Filipina that's seeing the U.S. for the first time. Now, I'm not going to deal with the whole don't bring your Filipina back to the West thing. I've already done two videos on it and expressed my opinion that depending on the woman, it can be a risky proposition. But for this video, I'm going to assume you've already weighed your options and decided that living in the West is at least a possibility. Hopefully, your Filipino partner can benefit from watching this video so she knows what lies ahead. And you can benefit from it by using me as your canary in the coal mine to spot issues you might not have thought about. In either case, I'm happy to be your guinea pig. So here's my list of observations from my time in the U.S. Even though my travels were limited to the South, I did get to spend time in six different states, and the things I'll be talking about should be mostly applicable to the country as a whole. I'll start with the things that surprised me, in no particular order. Americans don't use a lot of cash, and it looks like you're becoming a paperless society. I brought cash with me, but most of the time, I needed a credit card to get around, even for parking meters. In the Philippines, Cash is king, and people even buy houses by bringing suitcases of paper currency to the closing. I certainly didn't mind the difference, I just wasn't expecting it. So when you travel in the US, keep your plastic handy. Pets are treated just like family. They even have pet superstores the size of grocery stores, full of row after row of stuff I never knew existed from self-cleaning litter boxes to costumes for your gerbil. They even had a selection of DVD movies that were supposed to keep your dog interested while you're away at work. Is there really a demand for that? <laughs> Where I was, daylight lasted till almost 9 p.m., which was really weird coming from a country where it pretty much gets dark around 6 p.m. year-round. It really confused my mother when I called her in the evening, and she couldn't comprehend why it was still light out. I tried to explain about the Earth's tilted axis, but after a while, I just gave up and told her it was magic. <laughs> One of the things that really took me by surprise was the smell of marijuana almost everywhere I went. It didn't matter what time of day it was or what state I was in. I could smell it just about any time I was around a lot of people. The weird thing was, I never saw anyone smoking it, but the odor was everywhere. Don't ask me how I know what it smells like. I guess I just read about it in a book somewhere. <laughs> I was also amazed by all the wildlife. I saw a flock of birds, raccoons, squirrels, alligators, possums, wild turkeys, rabbits, as well as a whole bunch of insects I've never seen before, and even some I couldn't see. They have these things called noceums that are so small that you can't even detect them until your skin swells up. In the Philippines, you're not going to see much more than dogs and cats wandering through your yard, but in the U.S., there can be a strange creature at your front door at any given moment, which was kind of cool. Many old people still work there. You could go to a Circle K and the guy behind the counter might be 70 years old. In my country, most workers are much younger, often teenagers and 20-somethings. A lot of Filipinos work until about 50, then they just stay at home. Everything in the U.S. is highly automated, like self-checkouts, dishwashers, clothes washers, trash compactors, automatic doors, leaf blowers, and a million other gadgets. 
I was at one person's house where this little round thing popped up out of nowhere and vacuumed the floor by itself, then disappeared. By comparison, Filipinos spend so much time doing the same chores that you guys just sail right through. And although everything involved a learning curve for me, I sure did realize how nice it is to have a machine to clean your dishes for you. Your water pressure is insane. Standing in the shower feels like you're being blasted by a fire hose. Your Filipina is going to love washing her hair in America. And it only takes her half as much time in the bathroom, which means more time to be with you. And good water pressure means that toilets flush hard too, so you won't need to use a plunger every couple times to get Mr. Hanky to his final destination. Another thing I wasn't prepared for was how empty everything seemed. Stores felt like they only had a couple shoppers. And whenever I drove through a neighborhood, I never saw any of the homeowners. Where are they? I spent a lot of time driving through the countryside, passing thousands of houses and farms, and I rarely saw a single person. But somehow, all the huge yards were freshly mowed. So do elves come out at night and do the landscaping? I never could figure out where the everyone was, but you guys are definitely proud of your yards. In the Philippines, there's always people walking around in streets or standing outside their front doors. So America felt strangely empty for me. Very beautiful, but sometimes a little sterile. At the same time though, Americans are incredibly friendly and they'll start conversations with you at a drop of a hat. And I wasn't used to that. It got me by surprise, guys. I was like shocked when they just started, hey, how are you doing, where are you from, that kind of thing. It made me feel welcomed and at ease. It was so easy doing interviews there, and I often had more volunteers than I even needed. You seemed like a nation of extroverts, and even your children want to talk. I love that. I was so surprised that no one asked me where I was from. And I think most of them assumed I was American, which just goes to show what a melting pot you are. So I usually didn't feel like I stuck out at all. I did notice a lot of Mexicans almost everywhere I went. And they would sometimes start speaking to me in Spanish. So maybe they thought I was one of them. But do I really look like a Mexican lady? <laughs> <laughs> no habla espanol. <laughs> That's always my, my response to them. <laughs> Another thing I wasn't expecting was the huge variety of food choices and the giant portion sizes you get at restaurants. After sampling them, I can easily understand the obesity epidemic. It would take a lot of self-control not to get fat there. It's like offering drugs on every street corner, then wondering why there are so many drug addicts. And I was so surprised by all the distinctive flavors. For instance, peach. I can't really describe it, but it's definitely unique. And I'm glad I tried it. It was like finding out there was a new color I'd never seen before. And then there's licorice, which is a flavor I wish I could forget. That was horrible. So now I'll tell you all the things I particularly liked, and I bet your Filipinas gonna like them too. Most places are so clean there, I hardly saw any trash by the road, at least by Filipino standards. And most things are in good working order. Anyone that uses ATMs in the Philippines knows what I'm talking about. Half the time, they're broken. You can actually drink the water from the tap, and there's usually hot water in every sink even in the kitchen and all the bathrooms. Almost any product you can think of is readily available and it can be delivered right to your door within 24 hours. Can you believe that? The entire time I was there, I never once heard the phrase, not available. The electricity stays on. And even though I went through a typhoon there, I never lost power. Same thing with the internet, which was fast and cheap. Here, I'm paying about $60 a month. There, it's about $20 and it's fast as la Puma, lightning fast, and I love it. 
All these conveniences make your life fast and efficient. And so are the people themselves. If an American tells you they'll meet you at 1 o'clock, they'll show up about 12.45. I really like that because it keeps things flowing smoothly. At least you can schedule your day. But the thing I like the best is the way you're treated as a customer. In America, they say the customer is always right, which is the total opposite of how you're treated in the Philippines. If you call a company in the US, whether it's a bank, um, an internet provider, or even a department store, they almost always answer the phone by the third ring, and they'll actually try to help you with whatever you need. Businesses all have ample parking. They don't make you check your bags when you enter. The checkouts are super fast, and they don't follow you around like you're a thief or double check your receipts before you're allowed to leave. Well, some Walmarts I've been to, they check, but not all the time. They make it obvious that you're important to them instead of being some kind of nuisance. And the difference in the shopping experience between the US and the Philippines is absolutely huge. But now, the things I didn't like. The first thing is the price of certain things. If you're renting a home or an apartment in the US, be prepared to pay up to four or five times as much for a comparable place in the Philippines. I was lucky enough to find a great deal on an unfurnished apartment in Florida. But I researched a lot of prices while I was there. And let me tell you, they ain't cheap. Same thing with rental cars and hotels. I don't know if the prices just recently went up, but you can easily pay over 200 bucks a night for a mediocre room at a three-star hotel. That's just way too much. A lot of stuff is cheaper in America, but a lot of other stuff is insanely high. And I think I figured out a general rule. Products are less expensive there, but services are much pricier. I suppose that's because their wages are so much higher than ours. But anything that involves a person, like a plumber, a cab driver, or a gardener, is going to charge so much that you'll wish you could just do it yourself. So if you're buying a TV, then America's the place to buy it. But if you're wanting to get your hair cut, you might want to buy your Filipina a good pair of scissors and ask her to become your personal barber. You'll also find a bunch of sneaky little fees in the US that can really add up, like 20 bucks to park your car or 6 bucks to rent a baggage cart for a few minutes. The Philippines has even more fees, but they're usually so small that you don't really feel them. There's also a constant pressure to tip everyone. Now, I certainly don't mind tipping people for good service, and many of them survive on gratuities, but everywhere you look, there's a suggested amount to add to your bill, even at fast food restaurants. I'm sorry, but I really don't feel like I should have to tip someone for stuffing a burger into a bag and handing it to me. It just seems like the tipping culture over there is getting a little out of hand. And now let me cover some of the things that might confuse your Filipina. The first involves etiquette, which is often very different from Filipino traditions. I was invited to eat with an American family, which was very cool, and I wanted to make a good impression. As soon as I got there, they brought out a platter that had a bowl of grapes, some crackers and cheese, and a little thing of toothpicks. I know they don't eat with their hands like we do, so I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. Were the toothpicks there to spear the grapes with? Or was I supposed to use them on my teeth after I finished eating? Was I supposed to put the cheese on the crackers with my hands or use toothpicks to poke the slices with? <laughs> no one was touching the appetizers for quite a while, and I started to wonder if they were waiting for me to go first. And finally, someone else reached into the bowl and grabbed a grape with their hands and then put some cheese on the cracker. So I followed their example. I never did figure out what the toothpicks were for. You guys know what they are for? Please comment down below. <laughs> so my advice is that if you find yourself in a situation you're not familiar with, just wait till someone else goes first. Now I'm sure that all families are different, but it looks like it's okay to eat with your hands. 
sometimes. And when you use the CR, which they usually call a bathroom, don't expect to find a bidet. They don't do the tabo thing. They're gonna see a roll of toilet paper instead. And you definitely won't see a bucket or a dipper. This is one case where they're definitely not a paperless society. <laughs> now, I prefer a bidet if I have a choice, but just be prepared to make the change if you move to America. Speaking of bodily functions, please be warned that you cannot pee in public like you can in the Philippines. Unless you're deep in the woods. It's a serious faux pas to relieve yourself outdoors, and it's actually considered a crime. You'll find that the U.S. is much more strict about some things and much more lenient about others. So you just have to remember that when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Or in this case, do as the Romans do do. So how would your Filipino partner like living in the U.S.? Well, I got a chance to talk to several women who made the jump, and most of them said they loved it. The one woman who preferred the Philippines was a young woman who said she missed her family, which is understandable. And what was my overall takeaway from my time in the States? Well, I've mentioned how genuinely nice everyone was, and I can't emphasize it enough. There was not one single time that anyone was rude or made me feel unwelcome. And I'd like to share a little anecdote that pretty much summarizes the attitude of the people I ran across. It's meaningless by itself, but it meant a lot to me. After I checked in at my hotel in Savannah, I was walking down a long corridor that led to the elevator up to my room. There was a woman way in front of me who was already at the end of the hall, and I saw her turn the corner and heard the ding of the elevator as it arrived. I knew I wouldn't make it in time, so I slowed my pace. I was super tired after a day of driving, and I just wanted to collapse in my room. After almost another minute, I finally turned the corner at the end of the hall, and there was the same lady, patiently holding the door. I thanked her profusely, and I just had to ask why she waited that long for me, a total stranger. Because I knew you'd be here eventually, was all she said, with a smile on her face. That's a perfect example of the attitude I got from almost every American I encountered. They didn't want anything from me. They were just good people who really seemed to care. Now you might say not everyone's like that, and I'm sure they're not. But at least in the South, all I saw was smiling faces and offers of help. And as far as comments I've heard about racism in your country, well, I can only describe my own experience, but I can tell you that I never felt looked down on or discriminated against in any way, not once in my entire three months there. So I have no clue what people are talking about, at least as a nation. Well, that was my experience in the United States, but there's still one lingering question that I promise to answer. Will living in America make you fat? Stay tuned for a clip I shot four days ago, right before I got on the plane to come home. It's my final weigh-in, and I think it'll be illuminating. And while you're watching, I hope you realize how uncomfortable it is to weigh yourself in front of thousands of people. But my goal has always been to tell it like it is. That's it for this episode, and I'll be back on Friday as I resume my regular content with an interview from three pretty Filipinas who don't realize just how pretty they are. Till then, folks. So, folks, my U.S. journey is almost over, and as promised, I'm going to weigh myself one last time. And as you can remember, before the start of my journey, I weighed myself and it was 112 pounds. Well, <laughs> as you can see, guys, I think I gained some weight and I think that's unavoidable with all the airport foods, the pizzas, the burgers, the candies, and all the junk food I've been eating for almost three months now. It's unavoidable. Plus, I'm on my vacation. I wasn't going to count calories Plus, you've got, you guys suggested a lot of places to try, like uh, Cracker Barrel and 
Outback Steakhouse and a lot more. Arby's and In-N-Out Burger, that kind of stuff. I'm not proud of my body at the moment, but I can assure you guys, I guarantee when I get back to the Philippines, I'm gonna shed those extra pounds around my waistline, around my neck and my face and my arms. And also, this is a public advisory to my fellow Filipinas who are moving to the United States. Be careful with their food, it's just so tempting. So, here goes nothing, let's assess the damage of American food to your body. Uh-oh. I think, currently I am weighing 119 pounds. Holy moly, I gained 7 pounds. Hey, that wasn't so bad. No, we can work it out. Give me at least three months and I'll try my, my, I'll try my bestest to get back to shape. My, my ideal weight is about 45 kilograms to 50 kilograms, depending on how much muscle I want back in my body. You know, there's a saying, I ate the food, I drank the drinks, I had some dessert, I gained weight because life is so good. I'm not gonna apologize for that, folks, and neither should you. So, see you in the Philippines. Let's get physical, physical. I wanna get physical. <laughs> Sorry. If you think about it, I'm kinda like a doctor with my finger on the pulse of the Philippines. I can help to vaccinate you against all the problems you may encounter when visiting here with an injection of information and humor. If you appreciate my services, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell for your next dose of Dr. P. Consider becoming a patron, where you'll not only help to support my channel, but you'll receive exclusive videos and features. And while you're in the waiting room, you might wanna check out this other material. It's much better than some outdated magazines. And I promise, this won't hurt a bit.